Hello all. It has been almost, I think, two weeks since the last episode of the podcast, and I would like to apologize for the length of time. I normally try to record an episode once a week, um, and unfortunately, I have been ill. I actually got food poisoning early last week, and not the oh, my stomach is upset, Um, let me just take some Pepto-Bismol type of food poisoning. I wish that was what it was. (laughs) Uh, But the, oh, oh, okay. Oh, I think I'm, I'm gonna fucking die. Yeah, this is, uh, this is how people died, um, in, (laughs) in the, (laughs) in the Middle Ages. I'm laughing. It's not funny. Um, for those of you who know me, you know, I just, I laughed when, I laugh when things are just like out of the wall insane. So, um, trigger warning, I guess, if you are sensitive to these sort of sub- subjects or topics, um, I'm going to try not to get too graphic, but long story short, um, the, I got the fun kind of food poisoning, um, got it from a restaurant, um, happened about 30 minutes after eating. It just didn't click for me that it was food poisoning until like it was too late and I guess the bacteria, whatever, had gotten enough time to sort of proliferate and just ravage my body. I ended up in the emergency room, ended up on antibiotics, which I'm still on. Um, And I think this is like day two of me feeling like I'm kind of somewhat okay. I'm like 85% back to normal. Um... But I wanted to share with you guys um, a lot of what I was thinking um, throughout the process. Um, Because that's what this podcast is all about, right? It's a human experience we're all having simultaneously at this moment in space-time. And um, I wanted to to share it with you guys. Um, And of course, all of the thoughts that tend to occur in these sort of moments are worth sharing because in the human experience, uh, the one sort of universal that we all share is pain. Um, And boy, was I in a lot of it. So long story short in regards to the illness, I think what first started was I had like eggs and salsa. And um, I don't know which one of those guys did it to me, but within about three hours, my stomach was distended. I um, was in bed shaking and um, I could not get warm. Like my husband put about five to six blankets, like heavy fleece polyester type blankets on top of me, like the kind that you would like normally sweat if you had one on and he piled them on and I was still shivering. But I guess we were thinking, well, I don't have a fever, so maybe something else was going on. Um, But that clearly in hindsight was not a good sign. Probably should have gone to the emergency room at that point in time. I could not get warm. Um, He actually ended up lifting the blankets, got a space heater, put it within like two to three inches away from my body where it would not burn my skin, but turned it up to the highest and I couldn't feel it okay that's where i was guys um and that was on tuesday that this happened and um so that that was just like the the foundation <laughs> if you will um and then the like intense spasms full body spasms happened and then came blood um so a couple i think a couple days later two days later um, I, I think I just, I didn't want to process what was happening. Um, I think I, I'd taken some like, 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 I think like natural remedies or things like that. Cause I wasn't thinking food poisoning. I was still thinking like, oh, maybe my blood sugar is low, right? Or maybe like the bread that I had was not gluten free, right? Or maybe I got gluten, right? So that was where my thought process was. And even when I, you know, there was blood, I just thought, okay, maybe it's, you know, whatever you, you like, don't, (laughs) when you get blindsided by something like that, I think the first thing that we all kind of go through is like, this can't be happening, right? We don't automatically, I don't think anyway, 
jump to the worst case scenario, right? To the to like, okay, this could possibly be X, Y, or Z. We're actually relatively optimistic, which is funny because on the flip side, I, I, I you think about the internal monologue and how it is constantly thinking of the worst case scenario, right? For your just regular daily, you know, day to day life, right? You're driving in traffic and it's thinking of all the worst possible things that could be going on, except when it fucking needed to actually come up with the worst possible thing, right? That I needed, right? That's the that's supposed to be the function of this left brain, right? The internal monologue. It's supposed to calculate what the worst possible things, right? That could happen and then prevent that from happening or kind of alert you to it, become some sort of a beacon, um, if you will. Uh, I think I mentioned two books that kind of delve into this uh, topic a little bit more. Uh, the book is uh, The Art of Hunting Humans. And then the other one is um, La- uh, No Self, No Problem by Chris Liebauer, um, or Niebauer, one of those. But um, but that's the function of the left brain. But in the situation where, okay, it probably needed to perform the its function, it didn't. It actually was relatively fucking optimistic right it didn't go straight to food poisoning even though i'd had eggs and you know raw food right it just said oh well maybe you just had some bad bread and that was it and even when i was shivering and i my body i'd never had that experience i've never had anything like this happen i've never been in so much pain in my entire human existence at least in this present incarnation i was in pain and it wasn't just one it just kept compounding right so first it started with the shivers then it's then it moved on to the spasms and then it was obviously yeah i'm trying to be you know polite we're in polite company or whatever but the things that you know that are associated with food poisoning all of that was happening um plus the internal bleeding and then it like triggered my like sciatica but not like normal sciatica like oh shit this is sciatica so then just the intense pain throughout the legs and then my period started (laughs) and then I like so it was just of all the pain I could have been in at any given point in time I experienced all of it at once and a few things came into my mind um one is this is how is this how i'm gonna fucking die like legit it it was so intense and i was so like it was so out of my hands at one point i was sitting looking at my husband and he was talking to me and i was not there the pain was so like i could not I was not, I think I left my body because the body was so, it was in so much pain. I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand. And I kept moving in these different positions to try to find some sort of relief. And I just, I could not, I I could not. And so I just went blank. And um, this was like days in, this wasn't even, like it just kind of just prolonged. Like I went to the ER, they did the the CT scan, they saw the bleeding, they sent me home with antibiotics. Like two different types, three times a day. Um, and even that like did not provide like immediate relief because it's antibiotics. Um, took Imodium, that didn't help. Took uh, pepto that didn't help. I think Pedialyte was like the first thing that actually helped like stop stopped the spasms, which my mom had to call like her doctor to tell me to take. And then the one thing that eventually like woke me up was like, I think, five days in, four days in, something like that, my brain was like, Joe, grapefruit seed extract has been proven to be effective against like antibiotic resistant bacteria. And so a lot, I mean, I I am on antibiotics. I think it helps. It helped a fair bit. Um, But the grapefruit seed extract working in conjunction with the antibiotics, um, that was what just like push me over to the other side um and I started taking that like two three days ago and like I've slowly been that's when I started to kind of slowly get my strength back in and FYI if you you know don't have grapefruit seed extract please look into it um so I I want to be clear here I'm not saying that the antibiotics did not work they probably more than likely saved my life okay but antibiotics take time and to just to work and 
for me, in my experience, I'm not a medical doctor, but I had like a voice just sort of remind me, you have grapefruit seed extract, go and take it right now. And so taking that, I think with some warm wood that I just completely just in, in the throes of this experience, I'd completely forgotten about it. Um, and when I took it, it just, all of them, Western medicine and, herbo and herbology worked together to bring me to the point that I am now. I got to remember to take um, sips of my Pedialyte, so excuse me. <sighs> Gotta stay hydrated. Uh, <laughs> it's actually not Pedialyte. Uh, it's some sort of like, it's called, it's called Kinderlite. It's a natural oral electrolyte um, solution. So that's what I'm drinking on that PDLA. Uh, but that, that, that was my experience. So the first things that popped into my mind was, this is legit hard, I'm going to die. Here's the thing. There was no fear there. There was no fear there because one, I think because of all of the books that I read, I just, I knew that two things were going to happen. One, I would no longer be in pain. <laughs> so I don't know if you've ever been in so much pain that death becomes a relief because that's where I was. Like the, just c contemplating death becomes like, like I would literally, that would just be, that's the only instantaneous and immediate relief that I have to what I'm experiencing right now. So the idea of it did not terrify me, did not frighten me at all. Um, it was literally just like anything is literally better than what the fuck I'm going through right now. And the second thing I thought was, Honestly, I probably will just shift to a parallel universe where I survive whatever kills me. And the only person that's going to like experience me dying will be my poor, poor husband um, who's watching me go through this shit right now. And when I had that thought, like I looked up at him and he looked like this is a big guy. OK, my husband is like six, four, like 280 pounds, solid you know, giant man, right? Just all muscle. And I, I looked up and he looked terrified. He looked absolutely terrified. And that was what snapped me out of like the peak of pain, right? When I had like, just, I just completely just was like prepared to just go like, this is it. And like people die from this shit. I can see why. I looked up and I saw his face and I came back through and I said you know okay no not like this no no I can't do this I can't and I got up and when I got up I got hit with pain and I said to myself it's just pain I closed my eyes I stood up I got dressed I got hit with pain again and I said to myself it's just pain it's just pain and I'm like I'm gonna go lay down and I laid down and the pain abated and the next day, the all of the above started again. Um, throughout the night, it started, and I just kept saying to myself, "It's just pain." And I'm not I'm not telling you guys this because I'm some sort of like super strong, powerful guru, whatever. I literally had no other choice but to lean into that shit. I had no nothing else would give me relief. I had nothing to relieve me. So all I could do was walk into it. So I went into my head and as the pain attacked, as I had like a throng of pain and my body kind of convulsed and tightened. And I thought to myself, I'm going to crack a rib cage. It's so intense. Another part of me was like, enter the pain, right? Just go into it. It's just pain. And then I remember being in the shower and the pain like shot up my leg and down my leg and like just all of that. And I, I started laughing. I was crying from the pain, but then even the tears became like a relief, right? They it like released something. Obviously, you cry for a reason. And so I said to myself, okay, if you got to cry, cry because you need, you need the release. Whatever it is that gets released when you cry endorphins, I don't know, but do that. And then I laughed. I laughed a lot. Not like the, <laughs> not a joyful laugh, just like, are you kidding? What did I do to deserve this? Why am I going through this? What is happening? It, you, it was so painful. It was absurd. It was so painful. It was ridiculous that I just, I had no other choice but to laugh. But then 
I had the I had the period pain. I had the you know the inflam the internal bleeding, the infl- inflammation pain. I had the sciatic pain, and it was all happening at once. And I just I just stood there, and I was like, I have to. I I don't have. I, there's no escape to this. I'm in the body, so let it wash over me. And I stood there with my hand on like the the you know the wall, and the pain hit me. And I was like, it's just pain. And then the pain hit me again. And I got out of the shower and just went about my fucking business. Because I think after, what was this now? That was like, what day are we in? That was probably like Saturday or Sunday. It was probably Sunday. So it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It was like four days in, five days in. I was like, it might have been Monday. I was like, fuck it. I, I, I don't. I don't. I have no other choice but to accept this. Now, the predis like leading up to this experience, I, you know, I wake up with revelations all the time. And I, I was met with a revelation that we all say everything happens for a reason. Everything happens to everyone for a reason. But I always felt that sentence was com- incomplete. And right, literally the day that this shit happened, I said to my husband, you know, I think everything happens for a good reason reason and then I got food poisoning (laughs) and so as I'm just battling this yeah or allowing my body to battle it and just enduring the attack of it you know everything crossed my mind I said you know I said to myself you know the Spartans they endured the pain and made them stronger I just anything I I could say to myself to get through it right and then I said everything happens for a good reason and then I said, what is the reason for this? What is the good reason for this? One, I'll give you the good reasons for it. One, I could handle it. Obviously, here I am, right? Two, somebody needs to hear this. And so I've always said, and I continue to say, and that is the basis, the foundation of this podcast, that this The universe is intelligent. There's a greater intelligent that contrives the plots of our stories, writes our stories, that puts us all together. In fact, the individual that I had brunch with as I was getting the food poisoning, I had said the exact same thing because she'd said, life is meaningless. And I said, no, we just don't understand its meaning, right? I'm an artist. I paint. If somebody came into my studio and looked at my art and said, "Your, well, your, your art, what is the meaning? And they couldn't find the meaning to it. That doesn't mean I didn't have a meaning behind the pieces that I created. I just want the art to speak for itself. And I said to her, I said, this world is a work of art. And there's clearly an intelligent designer or intelligent designers. I I don't think it's a singular entity, by the way. Um, But there are clearly intelligent designers. It's a work of art. Everything is art. I mean, that's where artists pull inspiration from. It's, It's life. Right, so artists pull inspiration from other artists, right? And and life is a magnanimous work of art. And so I said, you know, there is meaning, just because we don't know what it is, but there is. And on top of that, we too can also give life meaning, additional meaning, as well. You know. So if you look at a piece of work, a piece of art, I might have my meaning, my reasoning for creating the work, right, as the artist. But you as a viewer could see a different meaning in it because it might reflect something back to you that is unique to your life experience. And the person next to you would have a completely different perspective and perception of the work of art. But that's what art that is why art is magical in a way and that's why life is magical in a way and so that's what i said i said okay this is it this is happening for a good reason i don't know what the reason is but it is happening for a good reason it is happening for a good reason i don't know what the reason is but it happened for a good reason now i i am sharing my story with you guys and how I dealt with it in in hopes to help you, 
and the revelations that I had while I was going through the throes. Because it doesn't make any sense for, for somebody to go through something like that and then not derive any meaning from it. Regardless of whether or not the grand architect of this world or whatever, or the story writers, you know, the intelligence, whatever, whatever meanings they intended for me to have, what, however they were trying to restructure me in, in some way. Like I had the thought that perhaps the antibiotics that I had to take because um, were, ch- were, were needed, I needed to take them to change my personality in a little way. And I have noticed that on the days that I've been on it, um, I've been much more like anxious, um, but not like mind and anxious as in like dealing with uh the internal monologue because fuck her or fuck the voice because it never it didn't, it didn't do its job which was to alert me to a possibility that food poisoning food po- poisoning could have been the possible reason for my distended stomach right until it was like much too late yeah um so if if that's not enough of a sign to like never listen to this voice again i i don't know what is um but uh it's more in my heart. I've been feeling things deeply um, recently. And I looked it up. And obviously, as you guys know, they say that the majority of like your serotonin and dopamine, things of that nature is actually created in the gut. And so when you take antibiotics, it does tend to cause anxiety and depression um, in people. So I've been taking Crucera, um, which I've mentioned before, and uh, broccoli sprouts extract um, in order to counter that, to introduce sulforaphane back into my body, um, to counter, you know, to decrease the probability of me developing anxiety and depression, right? The same way when you take antibiotics, you're supposed to take probiotics as well. Um, you also need to make sure that you're taking things to, that, that will regulate your mood down. And for me, um, it has been the broccoli sprout. So I'm making sure I'm taking that regularly um, in addition to everything else. Uh, but I do, I've been having intense, intense emotional sort of uh, feelings. Like I, I feel it in my heart chakra area, uh, if you will. Um, and normally, so my husband kind of jokes, he says, you're an empath, but I don't know how you can be an empath and not be empathetic. And what he meant by that is that I can feel what people feel. I just kind of don't care. Um and and I don't mean that in like in a harsh way. I do care. I just don't allow myself to care too much to the point where it becomes like detrimental to me because I'm the kind of person if I see you kind of going through something, I will put another person I not even will, I do consistently put other people's needs ahead of myself. And so I had learned to to sort of become a bit calloused in my heart area um, in order to protect myself so I'm not constantly doing too much for other people uh, to the detriment of myself. It's just a protected, it, it had become sort of a protective mechanism. Um, but as a result of that, that sort of feeling intensity um, diminished as well until this week. And I wonder if there's a correlation there and, and you know, with what's going on with that. So I thought that was interesting. I also thought that it's amazing how depleting yourself a particular, you know, organisms, microorganisms in your body can shift your personality, can almost turn you into a part- a whole new sort of person. Like that's wild to me. I've, I've talked about how we are, humanity are lichens, right? Like you present, a, you know, with a person, you meet a person and you think the person goes, hey, my name is Tom, right? And so we view them as an entity, but we forget that, that entity is comprised of a, of a, of a multitude, they contain a multitude, just like Amazon is a corporation, but they are comprised of millions of people that make Amazon. The same applies to human being. When you meet a person, you are dealing with left brain, left, right brain. You're dealing with who they are, who they are presenting themselves to you, their their internal monologue, not to mention the fungi, the yeast, the parasites, the viruses, good and bad, that are in their bodies, their immune system, the genetics, all of these things that sort of predispose them to a particular type of behavior. That is what you're meeting under the, the, the corporation, Tom, if you will. Excuse me, got to take another sip. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Um, got to make sure I'm staying hydrated because I am not quite 100%, but I wanted to record this because it was important. Um, so I said to myself, okay, like, what is the good here? And here's the bottom line. 
Pain is universal. Life is terrifying. These are the revelations that I had. No one has the right to control anybody. No one has the right to tell anybody else how to live. No one has the right to judge other people. Now, why am I saying that? Where did this come from? How is this correlated with food poisoning? Well, listen, as I sat on the toilet thinking about, is this how my life ends? I thought about the fact that I spent too much time worrying about what other people think. We hear this all the time. Stop thinking about what other people think. But I never really, you never really think about that, right? Until you're facing something alone, right? And and I wasn't obviously alone, alone, right? My husband was there, but there was nothing he could do. He's not a doctor, right? And he looked at me. I remember him looking at me and he said to me, I wish there was something I could do. And I said, we are not in control here. I am not in control here, neither are you. This is something that I had to go through, and so I'm going through it. And you just sort of lower your shoulders and let it happen. I didn't ask for that. All I could do was go through it. That is life. Right? So the people in our lives that are just trying to deal with maybe not as painful physically situations as what I've just experienced the last week, but certainly emotionally, certainly psychologically, right? Painful situations that, that, that come up in life, right? And they're just doing the fucking best that they can do with what is washing over them, right? I, I, that was a physical manifestation of what I think people emotionally go through. Not to say I haven't had my share of emotional pain. This year has been fucking painful. It's just pain. But we're all fucking in it. So if you wouldn't have judged me when I was sort of curled up on a ball on the floor, essentially waiting for death to relieve me of the intense spasms and pain that my helpless body was being ravaged by, if you wouldn't have come up to me at that moment and passed judgment and said, you're doing this wrong, right? Because that would be fucking heartless. then maybe we shouldn't do that at all to anyone. Because we're all in it. It's fucking waves, yeah? You go up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. No one has the right to tell another person what to do, and how to live. If they're just trying to make the best of the situations that they have found themselves in, and we are all conscious entities in situations, or I should say conscious entities finding ourselves in situations and trying to make the best out of it. And some of us do a good job, and some of us are still trying to figure it out. God almighty, I had to sit and reflect for some reason on how judgmental and quick to judge I have been for the greater part of my life. And the pain forced me into this sort of meditative state because I I couldn't be anywhere but where I was at that moment And it kind of woke me up and said, this is how people are most of the time. 
doesn't always have to be physical. Some people, I, 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 I was lucky, right, in the sense of either I made it through or maybe I didn't in a different in a past reality or previous reality and now I'm in this, in this new one. Um, but I was lucky in the sense of that this did not, I'm at the end and I'm knocking on wood, but I'm at the end. Of it, like so I'm lucky that this did not become something. You know, because at one point, like like long term, because at one point I thought, God, will this fucking ever stop? And then I thought, there are people who are in pain like this all the time. And it forced me to have compassion right because when you're in pain like that and you can't there's nothing that you can relieve like you can take you know medication and it can give you some sort of relief because that's what was going on right so and I'm thinking of people who for example like drink and it's easy for us if we don't drink right to say well you're just drinking to avoid your pain okay well I was just taking fucking anything right emodium pepto to to uh, wasn't to avoid my pain. I just did not. It was a lot. It was intense. Physically. And I couldn't, I got, it was like a little bit of relief. Now, do we condone people drinking? No, that's not what I'm saying. Do we condone people, you know, taking drugs or overeating or whatever it is that even judging in itself is a soothing, it's a self-soothing action, right? Because you feel inadequate, you feel scared, you feel like not good enough. And so you point the fingers and you judge others, even trying to control other people because on some level, you know, you know, you're not in control. So we try to grasp at some, at some sort of, <laughs> we're trying to control things that we aren't really, it's like a kid that you put in one of those like merry-go-round, but like their cars and the wheel, the circle Right, is going and it's just going, but they're turning the steering wheel, and maybe you can move left, maybe you can move right, but ultimately, the car, the car is fixed, and it's gonna do what it's gonna do, and you're just there for the ride. Maybe you can kind of reach an arm out and kind of stir somebody else in whatever direction, but ultimately, the ma- the machine is already in place and has been before you even got into it. And it will be when you get out. Compassion. Letting go of the need to control. Letting go of the need to criticize. If I couldn't control what happened to me, I couldn't stop what happened to me from happening, what makes me think? What makes you think there's anything much that I really do control? It all comes, kind of comes back to that, right? And more importantly now, expand it to other people when we're criticizing other people for behaving in particular ways. Before you go to speak, stop and ask yourself, what makes you think they are in control of their actions, right? Because we criticize because we feel like, well, they could be doing better. They could be doing something different. But just like I had no other choice but to sit there and go through and and react to what was going on to the best of my ability, right? To the best of my knowledge, all right. And thankfully, I knew about grapefruit seed extract and I knew about wormwood, you know. But even at that point before that, I was helpless. I threw my hands up and I said, 
okay, this is this is how I'm going to go. Then I, I cannot, I'm not in control here. Because even the idea to take the grapefruit seed extract didn't come to me when I was at the, the, the throes of it. It came to me the next day. What, why did that, why did it come? Why did it occur at that moment in time? I didn't control, I didn't, I couldn't control when it even occurred to me. So the person that you're mad at, the person that you're upset with, you are upset with them because you think that they are in control of their behavior. They're not even aware. Who taught you to judge? Excuse me. That's burp. Sorry. <laughs> who, ta- who taught you to judge? Who taught you to, 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 to criticize? Who taught you righteous anger and indignation? Society. Yeah. That's it. So you were born into a society where that action, that behavior, if you don't do this, you are this. It's all fucking noise. Funny enough, after all of the above occurred today, right? Remember I said... Side effects of antibiotics, especially the ones that I'm on, are anxiety and depression. And I've, you guys know, I've grappled, gone back and forth with it. And I was finally getting it under control with the broccoli sprouts, with the crucera, which is basically sulforaphane. Um, and I was taking maca as well um, for energy and things like that. Um, and then, like, boom. And it felt chemical. Like, the, I, I, it was like right before I came to record this episode, about an hour before, I felt the drop. I haven't felt the drop since I started taking broccoli sprouts. Um, but considering what I've gone through the last week, I don't think there's much there's much sulfur left in my body. So it obviously, I expected it. And so the pain hit me. And this time it was emotional pain. And I sat in it. I sat with it. I didn't try to escape from it. I faced it the way I fa- faced the physical pain. This too shall pass. And I, I put my hands down on my lap and then I laid down. And then I said, what is it that we want to do right now? And I'm talking to my body. I had to do a lot of self-soothing to my avatar, by the way. I was... I was <laughs> She, I'm temporarily dissociating, she, my avatar, my body, Joe, was in just, it just, it it was intense. And so I was, I rubbed myself and I said, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And I actually hope, but I had to, I had to self-soothe and hold myself and it's okay. Because for some reason, I like dawned on me, consciousness and avatar, consciousness, we are essentially Yes, we are gods having a human experience, but you need to understand what the fuck that means. That you, as a god, are more or less a kind of symbiote in an animal. All right? I'll say that again. You, as a god, as a consciousness, right? An all-knowing consciousness are a sort of a symbiote in an animal. And it is an animal. Your avatar that you put clothes on is no different physically than a wolf or a lion. The instincts are there, the biology are there. The difference is that you're just aware, right? There's just a higher level of consciousness. There's a conscious entity that's operating your form right now. So I soothe myself the way I would soothe like my, my puppy, right? Or a child that was going through that. It's okay. It's okay. And then in my own head, I said, this will pass. This will pass. One way or the other, it will pass. And so that was the physical pain. So then the emotional pain started. And I felt the drop. I think my husband and I, 
it's been an intense week and I think he needs to process some stuff. Um, and so we've just sort of been like, it's just been very, you know, it's been hard. And I think him seeing me that way did something to him, shook him in a way. And I, and I know I, I, I don't, I would not, he said, I wish I could have taken your pain. And my response to that is I would not have been able to handle seeing you the way I was. I would have rather been the one to go through it. Because that's a different type of pain. Especially for a man. Especially for a strong man. You know? So the emotional pain kicked in. And I felt myself grab my phone to try to soothe it. And I said, no. Because this for sure you know will pass. You know what it is. You know what the cause is. And you can treat it. I know how to treat it. Crucera probiotics. Maybe some like natural mushrooms. I don't, I'm not really taking uh, magic mushrooms anymore. Um, I don't want any sort of, I don't want any other intelligences in my body for being completely honest. And, and magic mushrooms, you got to respect that there is an intelligence in there. When you consume it, what you consume consumes you. So respect that. And I don't believe it's something that you use rec recreationally. I think you use it to have a sort of an awakening to become more aware. And then you understand that that is an entity. These are conscious beings as well. And when you consume their body, they become part of your, you know, biome, right? Bear that in mind. So... I sat there and I said to myself, could there be something, is there something productive that you could do with this pain? It's just pain. And I don't say that to diminish, trust me guys, this is not coming from a, pla a dismissive place because listen, you've heard what I've been through, okay? You guys know what I'm going through. But I think when you put so much veneration, right, reverence, you apply so much reverence to something like pain, when it is occurring, we tend to magnet that reverence that we have for pain, like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain, right? That, oh my God, that that's a reverence in a way. It magnifies it, right? It's almost like, think of it like a celebrity, right? For when you meet a celebrity, right, a lot of people go, oh, my God, it's, you know, so-and-so. You, you venerate them, right? You, you kind of put them above you. But they're just people. They're just human beings. They just, they came to this world butt naked and afraid just like you. They, 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 they are susceptible to food poisoning just like you. They sleep like you. They shit like you. They fuck like you. They eat like you. They're just like you. Consciousness in an animal. That's it. You don't need to venerate them. That's the same mindset that I want you to have about pain. You don't go, oh my God, I'm in pain. You go, it's just pain. I'll get through this too. I'll get through this too. Because part of me the wonders if this experience will numb me, right, in the future to pain. And I think that it actually just kind of recalibrates things better for me. Because now my point of reference kind of changes as far as like what is actually painful, right? You're expecting a text from somebody, they didn't text you back. Eh... It doesn't hurt in the same way as, <laughs> right, entire body, body spasms and essentially internal bleeding and, and, you know, pain so intense that you separate from your body and like just black out. I'm not talking about you guys' experience, right? I'm talking, I can only speak from my own experience, okay? So just bear that in mind. 
But it put things into perspective. It puts things into perspective. All right. And maybe it changes the things that you can carry. They say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I, I, I definitely have lived that. It didn't kill me, knock on wood. But I do feel stronger. I, I would not want to go through that again. In fact, there's a lot of like anxiety around that over the last couple of days. Could be the antibiotics like feeding into that. But especially when I sleep at night, if I'm in the wrong position for too long, I feel I wake up like, oh no, it's about to start again. Um, and it it doesn't. But there is like there's a bit of PTSD with that experience. But I do feel stronger. And not stronger in the way of like, just, you know, hit me with your best shot, bring on the pain. But stronger in the sense of I can handle it. One. Stronger in the sense of I am more compassionate. There was a bug in the shower. Yesterday. Normally, see a bug, freak out, kill it. And this time, I saw it. And it wasn't like harm, harm, harmful bug or anything like that. It was just like a little flying thing. But I would have, like, being honest, like, it's a bug, you're in my house, I'll kill you. Like, <laughs> that's it. And then I had this thought, like, it feels pain too. So I left it alone. Because in one sense, it is just pain. Don't venerate it. But in the other sense, it is we're all in it. We feel pain too. That person that you're upset at right now is in pain. If they're not in physical pain, they're in emotional pain. If they're not in emotional pain, they're in psychological pain. I'm not saying that... A person is mentally ill or causing you pain, like undue pain that you put up with them, right? Or you keep them in your life. That is not what I'm saying here. In fact, through this process, through what happened, I have had to sort of cut certain people off or put them at distance because even in the throes of my shit, right? I'm, I'm the kind of person that tends to just sort of be there for people, no matter what, but I've never had to be in the situation before. I don't ask for anything from people. I do try to be a good friend, be a good person. But when I was going through my stuff, all they wanted to do, like I'm literally, like I'm telling them, I am bleeding internally. And they were like, oh, get well soon or something like that. It was just like a flippant comment. And then, and I said, I'm like, (laughs) I don't want to go into too deeply um, because it doesn't really matter. But I I literally let them know here the first time, like, look, I'm not okay here. And I'm never not okay. And their responses were weird to me. There was, there was almost, it was almost like, oh, I'm sorry you're going through that. Get well quickly, but so that I can, continue to lean on you and take from you what I need from you. And I don't need those kind of people. Okay. So it's not a judgmental thing. Okay. To go, I don't need those people. It's just to go, I don't need those people. Just because we're all in pain doesn't mean you have to add to your pain, right? In the throes of the food poisoning, I did everything in my power to make my body as comfortable as I possibly could. I certainly wasn't doing anything to add to the pain. I wasn't like punching myself on top of all of it, right? And if there was something that was causing me pain, so for me, it was the seat, um, the toilet seat. So I got one of those squatty potty, like with the Amazon brand, uh, the stools that lift, that elevate your leg so that I wasn't putting pressure on my back and triggering the sciatica. And then I got like a cushioned, um, toilet seat. This is TMI, but look, this is real shit. This is what happened. People shit. 
people get food poisoning. You don't know who needs this information. I am not ashamed. This I, it happened to my body. So I got one of those, like I, I went on Amazon and searched for like a seat cushion for the toilet. And I found like a four inch one and I got that and that greatly helped. So I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, I'm in pain. I'm just going to like, you know, and then this other stuff, these other things are also causing me pain. I'm just going to like bear it. No, I did what I needed to do. Controlled what I could control to help alleviate myself from pain. But if there were anything external causing, adding to my pain, please believe that I would have removed it from my person, from me. Okay? So while other people are also in pain, you can have compassion for them. That doesn't mean that you can, you have to allow them to contribute to your pain. Okay? But acknowledging that they are also in pain is where compassion sets in. Ultimately, what I took from this is live and let live. More and more, the older I get, the more passive approach to life I'm taking. You know? I've become, I'm becoming more and more an observer of life. I mean, I'm active in the sense of you know, I, I still, I'm, I create, I do the you know the podcast when it moves me. Um, I wait for whatever it is I'm going to discuss to come up. In this case, this is what it was. I didn't see this coming a week ago, uh, <laughs> for sure, or two weeks ago. Um, but I, I do, but I do wait for whatever these nudges are. And then I kind of go into it and I paint and I write and things of that nature. So I kind of go about my day in that way. But more and more, I'm becoming less and less controlling of other people. My expectations for what I want other people to do are diminishing because ultimately, I have no control. I can express what I would like, but without the expectation that they will, they will meet my needs because they're not in control either. Right? All I can do is uh, to aspire on some level to control what I can do. And all I can do is hope that the people in my life that I choose to have in my life are also aspiring for the same thing. But you bear in mind that there, that if you have people in your life that aren't aspiring to be more self-aware, right, to control what they can control, then they are largely being directed by external forces, right, the lichen, like I talked about. Um, or even, you know, in internal forces as well, right? Society, you know, <laughs> serotonin, dopamine, uh, their DNA, the way they're, they're raised, their upbringing, you know, nature, nurture, fucking inherited generational trauma, all of the fucking above is this entity that you look, look at and call Tom or Ashley, or Shantae, right? They're not one. They are a multitude. Everything that you are going through, understand that it's not just you. Everyone's carrying their shit. Everyone's got this voice that's talking shit. And we forget that just as you can wake up in a bad mood and sometimes you can be afraid and the fear comes out of nowhere and your dopamine drops or your serotonin drops or your estrogen is, you know, too high or all these crazy things that are pulling us this way and the other. We barely are even aware of that. We got to pause and reflect on that and take a step from that and create space around that. And then look up and realize that applies to the person that you're mad at right now. They're in pain. Yes, it is just pain. And in the moment, it is 
only pain. But they're in pain. So the next time somebody upsets you, next time somebody cuts you off, the next time somebody says something off the wall to you, the next time somebody behaves in a way that disappoints you, upsets you, somebody you care about, right? These are good people that obviously, hopefully, you have in your life, but they just don't quite meet your expectations. It's not even about lowering your expectations. It's just acknowledging they are in pain and they're not in control. There's only so much that they can control. Particularly if they're not even aware. That is almost even worse. Right? Because then they're not awake at all. It's just they are imprisoned by all of these things. Pulling them here and pulling them there, right? See, the difference is, for example, when I had the emotion of sort of an emotional pain, right? A drop. In the past, I would have just been depressed. I would not have, there would not have been space in there to say, oh, okay, my body, you know, is experiencing this emotional drop, probably from the antibiotics. Do something productive with this. I would have just been like, and I'm depressed, (laughs) right? Right? But instead, I go, my avatar is depressed, and it's just pain. Now let's find something productive to do with this. And even if it's not, even if in that moment I didn't want to, because remember I said before I decided to do something productive with it, which was come down and record the episode, I said, just sit with it. Let it wash over you. Do nothing. It it will pass. It's just pain. But it took me a long time. It has taken me a long time and loads of books to get here. The average person isn't reading five books a week, (laughs) let alone one book a year, okay? The average person isn't aware at all of all of the things that I talked about in today's episode. And they're in pain. Just pain. But they're in it. So soothe them. If you can. Not before, of course, soothing yourself. Thanks for listening.